In automotive engineering, a single question persists. Does function follow form, or is it form that follows function? This query has long divided the minds of designers and engineers alike. Even in modern times, the debate remains unresolved, but we have at least resolved the age-old puzzle of the chicken and the egg. Yet, in the bygone era, engineers faced the challenge of fitting powerful engines into sleek, compact bodies, while designers struggle to mold vehicles around the confines of the engine. Today, let us embark on a journey through the annals of automotive history to explore the fascinating world of early designs that dared to place engines in unconventional configurations and even push the limits of automotive engineering. Instead of the traditional front-wheel drive setup with a transverse mounted engine or its longitudinal counterpart, let's deep dive into the alternate side of the quirky solutions that emerged in the past but were never reproduced by their creators. Sometimes, the absence of revisiting a technical breakthrough may signify that what seemed right at the time, but was not destined to endure. Or perhaps, these ideas were too costly, or were not embraced by the heads of various departments for a multitude of reasons, leaving us to wonder why the original creators never breathed life into them again. The first on our list is a Swedish classic. Behold, the Saab 900's first generation, seemingly a regular hatchback at first glance. However, hidden beneath its unassuming exterior lies a marvel a 45-degree slanted inline four-cylinder engine mounted longitudinally. And even more, a daring twist that defies convention. For this power plant feeds the primary gear of the transmission from the front of the vehicle. Yes, you heard it right, from the front. Saab's ingenuity extends further with a transaxle gearbox design, serving as the engine's oil pan and a receiver of its power through chain-driven gears. While many adopted a similar approach, Saab's solution deviates by keeping the oil sump separate from the transmission. Why this audacious design? Well, it's to accommodate a narrow, front-wheel drive car with a low hood line and still make room for a double wishbone front suspension. Yet, for all its brilliance, the unconventional powertrain proved less dependable than expected, with the transmission bearing the brunt of its weakness. Next on our list could be considered a forgotten Japanese legend. Venturing forth, we encounter Honda's third-generation Vigor and the inaugural Acura TL, bearing an unprecedented five-cylinder engine from the Japanese automaker. An intriguing choice, seldom seen in Honda vehicles, accompanied solely by this model duo. However, the real intrigue lies in the engine's slanted orientation and its transmission attached to it. The unique configuration continues with the asymmetrically installed limited slip differential, deploying half shafts to power the front wheels. Embracing a mid-front powertrain setup, the engine nestles slightly behind the front wheels, bestowing a superior weight distribution across the axles. At the time, it was a remarkable feat that left us in awe. Sadly, Honda bid farewell to this setup after the Acura TL's generation shift, never to repeat the performance in its subsequent engines. Next up is an underrated minivan. In the 1990s, Toyota dared to embark on an unconventional path when they introduced the Previa minivan. It was quite ahead of its time by using a mid-engine layout coupled with rear-wheel drive and even a supercharged engine variant. Furthermore, an all-wheel drive iteration dubbed Alltrack joined forces with the supercharged Marvel. Yet, the piece de resistance was the engine's 75-degree angle placement beneath the front seats, an engineering marvel we couldn't help but admire. Toyota chose not to revisit this daring configuration, but we cherish the memory of this automotive wonder. Surprisingly, servicing a mid-engine minivan proved an unexpectedly simple task, with the spark plugs easily accessible by removing the passenger seat and an access panel. All ancillary components conveniently resided under the hood, driven by an accessory drive shaft. Notably, the Previa boasted a remarkable 50-50 front-to-rear weight distribution, a stunning achievement even for a minivan. Next on our list is an Italian masterpiece. Ah, the iconic Lamborghini Miura, a pioneer in the mid-engine 2C class, is forever etched in automotive history. This configuration now graces supercars and hypercars alike, but in its early days, an audacious novelty brought to life by the brilliance of three top engineers who passionately crafted the prototype during their spare moments. Lamborghini's daring innovation lay in a transversely mounted V12 engine, a groundbreaking leap for road cars of its time. The constraints of limited space due to the engine's ill-fitting proportions in the Bertoni style prototype inspired this daring move. Taking inspiration from the classic Mini, Lamborghini ingeniously integrated the engine and gearbox into an integral casing, even sharing lubrication until the introduction of the P400 SV model. A compact clutch nestled within the engine block further ensured snug packaging. While the Lamborghini Miura has become a priceless automotive gem, there does exist a Chrysler model that holds an even higher price tag than any Lamborghini on the market. Which brings us to our next car, the Chrysler Turbine Cars, 
a captivating ensemble of experimental vehicles from the 1960s, which ran on a gas turbine engine capable of devouring any flammable fluid, including peanut oil and tequila. This was likely since it did not work well with leaded gasoline, which left deposits within the engine. Although Chrysler crafted only 55 of these unique vehicles, it ultimately reclaimed 46 from its selected users, only to crush them. Today, the remaining nine resides in museums and private collections, and one is proudly owned by Jay Leno. Nestled in the front, the gas turbine engine powered the rear wheels via a torque flight automatic transmission. Although not groundbreaking in placement, this turbine engine marvel stands alone as the only one produced by an automaker. And finally on our list is a car that deserves more recognition for its involvement in the evolution of turbocharging, the Oldsmobile Jetfire. In a bold pursuit of enhanced fuel efficiency without compromising the raw power of a big V8, Oldsmobile embarked on an intriguing collaboration with the Garrett Corporation, which was renowned for its industrial turbochargers. Together, these giants crafted turbochargers tailored for cars, featuring a compact diameter and specialized internal combustion-focused pipework to unleash their potential. Behold, the T5 turbocharger, elegantly designed as a seamless bolt-on enhancement, gracing a unique variant of the F85 Cutlass, aptly christened the Jetfire, a name that evokes visions of speed and thrill. Some proclaim it as the world's premier turbocharged production car, while others contend that the Chevrolet Corvair Monza Spider Turbo earns that title, though the debate remains inconclusive for both hail from the General Motors stable. Under the hood, the 215 brake horsepower turbo rocket engine heralded a revelation in performance, enriching the non-turbocharged version with a staggering 30% increase in torque. A blistering 300 foot-pounds of torque surged live by 3200 RPM, with a formidable 280 foot-pound eagerly awaiting command from a mere 2000 RPM. This dynamic upgrade catapulted the F-85 to 100 miles per hour, a full 10 seconds faster than its non-turbo sibling, while 60 miles per hour materialized almost twice as swiftly as the entry-level model's 155 brake horsepower counterpart. Yet, amid its triumphs, the Jetfire faced two substantial quandaries. Firstly, its suspension retained the same wobbly, uncomfortable, and unpredictable setup found in the ordinary Cutlass. Secondly, the Jetfire's engine necessitated a peculiar solution to evade detonation, the dreaded engine knock, a challenge that confounded many owners. Enter the rocket fluid tank, filled with a potent blend of methyl alcohol and water. This concoction required spraying into the intake airstream, cooling it, and keeping combustion temperatures in check. Unfortunately, human forgetfulness proved to be the nemesis, as many owners neglected to replenish the tank, leading to power loss. Frustration ensued, and some buyers shunned the idea altogether. Additionally, the fuel injection system displayed erratic behavior, introducing its own set of problems. As a result, Oldsmobile's reputation took a hit forcing them to retrofit a four-bell carburetor as an attempt at redemption. Sadly, the turbocharged era proved fleeting, as the U.S. turned its gaze back to big V8 engines by 1964, leaving the turbocharged revolution dormant for a time. What do you think of our list? What other cars should we have mentioned? For now, let us revel in the creativity of these bull automotive innovations, each a testament to the daring spirits of their creators, etching their mark on history's canvas.